Hi, my name's Andy, and this is a video about why you would use Git for source control. Uh, source control means looking after your source code somewhere where you have a history of what you did, and you can find out uh, what it looked like in the past. And Git is one tool for doing source control, a really excellent tool that I highly recommend. Um, so what I'm going to look at is uh, very briefly have a look at what source control is for in my opinion, uh, which will help us think about what uh, a good tool for source control gives you. Um, I'm going to look at uh, the old way of doing source code control, uh, which I'm calling the centralized model. Uh, then I'm going to look at the new way, which is the way that Git and some other things do it, called the distributed model. Um, look at some pros and cons for a centralized approach. Uh, talk about why Git's better. By the way, uh, most of what I'm going to talk about um, is true of the other distributed uh, source control systems, not just Git. Um, I know more about Git. I'm sure the others are really good too. Okay, so let's start off with what is source control for? Well, uh, primarily, I think uh, what a lot of us really use it for is just a backup, especially if your uh, source code control is on a different machine or in a different location from... Uh, where your code is, then it's automatically a backup of the code. Uh, the other main use of it that uh, is really important at, at really difficult times, like just before a release when you found an awful bug, is finding out why something happened. Um, if you can look back, not just uh, look at the, the code as it is now, but look back at um, the change that happened that caused it to be in this weird state that it's in now that you can't understand, um, and a little description hopefully by someone of what they did, um, you're much more likely um, to understand what they did and therefore not screw it up when you fix up, fix the uh, the mess they made. Um, and another very important reason for having source control um, is because you're going to have multiple simultaneous versions that you want to work up at the same time. Um, and you can behave logically. Um, you can move little bits of code back and forth between those versions um, in a, a sensible and controlled way. So examples of when you would need uh, simultaneous versions is when you've got uh, several releases that you need to support uh, simultaneously. Uh, but also, if you're working on a change that you you don't want anyone else to look at yet, um, it's nice to be able to work on something as an individual and merge it in when you're ready. Um, okay, so let's start by looking at... Um, the centralized model, which is the uh, the way most source control uh, worked until relatively recently. So you had a big thing uh, called the server, uh, and if you have a source control system like CVS, or Subversion, uh, or Perforce, um, uh, or one of many others, um, this is the way it works. You have a server which is uh, responsible for looking after your code and then everyone who's writing code is a client. Uh, so each client um, sits where they are and they sync the code, they update the code from the server and then when, when they've made a bit of code that they're ready to uh, give to everyone else, they commit it um, and it goes up to the server. And once it's in the server, anyone else who syncs the code or updates the code gets those changes. So there's a single um, history of what's happened uh, and if two of you are working on the same piece of code at the same time the person that commits it um, first is the person who wins and then the, the person who was too slow um, has to uh, sync the code uh, and merge it in, merge in what you've done with what they're working on before they can commit it. Okay, and then here is the distributed model, um, which is the way Git works. So in this way, um, you've got uh, a local repository on your computer, and you may well have a repository that everybody shares, um, which is the one that I've called just another repo. Um, and, uh, and that may well sit somewhere that you can all access and you can all send changes to. Um, but functionally, it's actually it's just another repository. It's um, equal with your local repository. 
um, in every way. So your local repository contains the entire history of the project. And remarkably, because uh, some very clever people wrote Git, it doesn't take up too much space. You would have thought you need a huge server to hold that kind of information, but actually source code isn't very big, and uh, Git's compression of your source code is uh, remarkably good. Uh, so you can easily fit a local repository on any reasonable machine. Uh, in fact, it won't even make a dent on your hard drive. If you've got a video on there, it's going to be way, way bigger than your Git repository for a large project. Um, but the key thing uh, to notice here is, number one, the main repository is just another repository. Um, and number two, you have a whole repository on your machine right near you. So when you make changes, uh, you, you commit them, which sends them to your local repository, and you can merge from stuff that other people have done um, from your local repository onto your workspace where you're actually writing code. Um, and then when you're ready, you can send stuff from your local repository to some other repository. For example, this just another repo, which is the centralized one in our scenario. And the word for that that's used is push. And to grab stuff from uh, another repository, you fetch. Uh, and another word for doing a fetch and a merge, so it pulls it into your local repository, um, and then pulls it into your local workspace, is merge. Is, sorry, is pull. And so pull does a fetch and a merge. Uh, anyway, the key thing here is that um, everyone's on an equal footing. What that means is that um, you can push uh, and pull stuff to and from someone else's repository. Uh, you can have another repository that a few of you are using, and then when you're all ready, you can push it to um, to the real big centralized repository or anywhere else you want to. So you get a lot more freedom, but you can tell from the... Uh, complexity of this diagram that uh, the situation is a little bit more complex and that's what you pay for your extra um, freedom. Okay, so let's make me a bit bigger. So um, what are the pros and cons of a centralized approach like uh, CVS or Subversion or Perforce? Well, uh, fundamentally it is quite simple. Um, there's only one history that you have to worry about. There's only one repository where everyone agrees that's where the code lives, and that's what happens to the code in that order. Secondly, there are some good user interfaces um, uh, for these things. Uh, I've used a few of them. The one I've used, the UR, I've done a lot of uh, CVS and Subversion. I've mostly used the command line, which I like the interface, the command line interface of. Um, the uh, GUI that I've used most is the Perforce GUI, which is a good GUI. Um, yeah, as I said, uh, history is linear. Uh, Perforce also, also has a nice feature called the shelf, where if you're in the middle of doing one thing um, and you need to pause because you've suddenly got an emergency bug fix um, for that important customer, uh, you can put your change that you're working on uh, on this thing called the shelf uh, and it'll happily live there um, until you need it and you can do something else and then grab it back later. Uh, it's a great feature. Downsides to centralized repositories well, the biggest one uh, that makes life really hard, especially at times that are stressful already, like just before a release, um, making a branch uh, is a big thing. It has to be done on the server. Uh, in some setups, that means you need a system administrator or someone to do it. Um, you've got to fill in a form. Uh, things can be uh, very tricky. Uh, and generally, it means that uh, if lots of different people want to make branches, even if you've got a very sympathetic system administrator who'll do it for you, or if everyone's got permission to do it, you're going to end up with hundreds of branches called Andy's Little Thing Branch and so on, and then do you delete them? You know, it's a nightmare. Um, uh, secondly, uh, merging from branches, which is, of course, the purpose of branches. You wouldn't need branches. You could just take a copy if you weren't going to do merges. So um, any discussion of branching without discussing merging uh, is significantly lacking. Uh, Merging can be difficult, and in particular what I'm thinking of is, until relatively recently, merging in Subversion uh, was just a matter of taking the two files and seeing what's different between them and letting you merge in bits of them. Now, I believe that Subversion has fixed that problem uh, in the last few years. I haven't tried since then. It ought to be much better than that, so don't, uh, um, don't take my fud on that. The last time I tried it, it was difficult. 
Um, <clears throat> and uh, with models like Subversion and CVS, um, because you have a central server, all the significant operations that you do involve talking to the server over the network, assuming your server is on a different machine, which it normally is, uh, and that can make things slow. Now, Subversion went some way towards improving some of that because you can do things like diffs without going to the server, whereas with CVS you had to go to the server even to do a diff. Um, but it's still the case that um, people, some people complain quite a lot about the performance of Subversion. Um, and certainly if your server is under a bit of load, like for example if you're using one of the big public um, open source websites like SourceForge, sometimes their servers are under heavy load. Using Subversion can uh, can be a bit painful if the server is under load. Okay, so why is Git better? Well, mostly because it's a combination of distributed and fast. So let's have a look at it. Um, the advantages of being distributed are uh, it's easy to share code with your friends without sending it back to the central repository. You can send it to your friends, or you and your friends can set up a little repository um, that just you want to work on, um, and then later send it to the central repository. And all that stuff is kind of built in because all the repositories are um, equally valid and equally powerful. Um, if you use a public site like GitHub, um, all that branching, forking, and uh, uh, sending pull requests and stuff um, is really easily accessible to you. You really can do these advantages. Um, another advantage for, that would be particularly useful in some corporate environments is that you can have more than one uh, central repository. Um, for example, you could have uh, a staging repository where people check stuff in, but then once the smoke test has been run on the staging repository, then the system automatically pushes all the stuff onto a, another repository called smoke tested. Um, you could have mini repositories for each sub team, which then get merged together later, which is the way the Linux kernel team work. Uh, they have loads of different uh, sub teams, and then or the code is finally pulled into the very central repository uh, later. Uh, you yourself can also work in a mini branch. You might do that for weeks, or you might do it for a couple of hours. But um, when you get used to how easy it is to branch in Git, because a branch just lives on your local repository, uh, it doesn't affect anyone else, then uh, uh, you may well get into using a branch for, for every single change you make. Some people uh, really advocate that approach. Um, Git also has this fantastic feature called Stash. Uh, which is like shelf, except with full, what it's doing underneath is doing a full branch, which it can then merge really powerfully for you later. Uh, so it's the same functionality as shelf, uh, which I was talking about earlier, where you can just pause what you're doing until later. Um, but it's, uh, it's got so much more than that. You can pause uh, several things, or you can pause stuff that builds on a different point in history, and it will get merged in nicely for you. Um, and one of the uh, key things that's great about Git uh, is that it's really fast. And it doesn't sound like that important a thing, but really it is. When you're sitting waiting um, for this great big diff uh, to find out why Jim um, broke this uh, customer critical bug, and when it's 7 o'clock in the evening, um, and you should have gone, to, gone home at midday, you're really going to wish uh, that your source control system was as fast as Git. And when you're doing, uh, when you're working in a way that tries to keep the changes that you're making as small as possible, so it's really easy to understand what you did later, uh, you want to diff things all the time. You're really going to appreciate uh, how fast it is to diff, how fast it is to do every operation in Git uh, without the need to connect to the network at all. Okay, more reasons why Git's better. Well, as I just said, you can work offline. You can do everything you can do in Git, except send stuff to another repository um, without talking to the network at all. Uh, so you can do a, comp a complex um, merge of several different branches. As long as you've already uh, fetched those branches onto your machine, you can do that whole operation while you're on a plane uh, and send off the result um, to the centralized server later. Um, being offline makes it fast. Um, uh, it means that you're not uh, waiting for a, a server that's down. You can keep working uh, as if nothing's happened when the server's down. Uh, and it means that you can work in little mini branches that only belong to you and don't, don't affect anyone else or annoy anyone else. 
Another reason why Git is better is because merging actually works. And there are some complicated reasons about why Git's underlying model is better than some other models, um, which I may get into in a future video. Um, but your experience when you use Git is that when you want, when you ask it to merge some stuff, it merges it. It doesn't come back saying, uh, I couldn't do this. It does it. I mean, there are times when it can't do it. Um, but compared with using other systems I've used, the times it says that are when there's really something difficult that a human needs to decide. Um, whereas with other systems I've found that it asks you that when really you feel like it could have worked it out. And finally, uh, it's just a killer feature for me. Uh, it's just so fast. Uh, it, it, all those little pauses that you have to wait for in other systems that make your brain hurt and break your flow, they don't exist because the guys who make Git hate that stuff and they fix it whenever it happens. And they know a lot. Some of these guys wrote some of the Linux uh, file systems, so they wrote, they wrote Git specifically within uh, parts of Git specifically to make them particularly fast when operating on certain file systems. So uh, the smart guys have done a great job of making it fast, uh, and it really makes a difference. So my final conclusion is: don't fear the branch. Uh, using other source control systems. Uh, branching is this scary thing you want to stay away from. When you're working in Git, um, branches uh, are a pleasure to use. Uh, they're fast, they're available to you whenever you want. Uh, merging from a branch works. And actually, you can really improve the way you work. If you get rid of your fear of branching um, and start using branches effectively, uh, they really improve the way you work and make everything a lot clearer for you and for everyone else. So uh, that's it for this. I, I hope that um, over the next few weeks I'll make a few more videos about the way I use Git and the different ways you can use it, um, some of the details, the exact commands you can use. So um, see you then.